Well, hello guys, this is Katie with Vintage and Vinyl, and tonight I've got a special guest on showcasing her camera collection. We've got Tammy from Vintage Uprising, Texas. Man, it's so good to have you, Tammy. Thank you, Katie. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about yourself, Tammy, and your channel. Well, I'm, uh, I'm Vintage Uprising Texas. I have a YouTube channel. I'm on all platforms as Vintage Uprising Texas. And I'm a reseller and a mini collector of all kinds. <laughs> Well, that's right. Tammy's got some fabulous collections, so she'll she'll have to be back on and show her toys. But tonight we're taking a look at her camera collection, which I'm very excited because I love vintage cameras. My grandfather, my great grandfather, I should say, had a Connolly camera. So that kind of sparked my love of cameras. And I'm so thrilled to have Tammy on. You can see a little bit of eye candy behind her tonight. <laughs> this is where everything is. Yes. <laughs> So wonderful. Well, let's say hello to a couple of people who are joining us, Tammy. We've got Angela Marksberry in the chat. Hello, Angela. Welcome, welcome. Christy, Tippy Wings Vintage. Hello, Christy. Sharon C. is coming in tonight. Hello, Sharon. Vintage Venny. We've got Kat at Calypso Antiques. Diane Broderick. Bobby Jansky. Hello, hello. Tammy Renee Walker coming back, and I'm sure Linda's not far behind. Hello, Daniel. Chat always jumps on me. Hi, Debbie, our Vagabond Travels. Welcome, welcome. Hi, Nicole. I'm so glad you're joining us. You're a new name, but welcome, and I'm so glad you're here. We've got uh, Mary R. coming in the chat. Hello, Mary R. And Proud American. Hello, hello. Proud American always keeps us laughing. <laughs> So guys, we are here for show and tell tonight on cameras. Now, after my show and tell, there's a special event going on, a pop-up sale with Pamela Blanchard and Sabrina Simon, who just joined us. So make sure you go over at 1030 Eastern on Pamela Blanchard's channel here on YouTube and go catch their pop-up sale, which is going to be a lot of fun directly after my show tonight. So Tammy has uh, started a collection of cameras, and I'm curious, Tammy, to know how you got interested in collecting cameras. Hmm. Well, if y'all don't know, I, I was a part-time photographer as well, and I still do it. I just don't advertise it anymore. I'm still by word of mouth. I used to do weddings and sports and uh, corporate events and I'm more into sports and corporate events, you know, the more relaxed photography. But that's where I started. I started back in 2003, I think, is when I became a photographer. But I've always loved photography. I used to be a big time scrapbooker. I always took pictures of my children. My motto is if I didn't have a picture of my child or 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 the event that was taken, I'd probably forget about it. I'd probably forget my own child if I didn't have pictures of them hanging all over my house. <laughs> I have a bad memory, but I think that's what got me started into it. And I just love the way they look on the shelf. They do. There's so many different styles and I really love the art deco cameras. I just think they're fun. So that's a really neat way to get started into collecting cameras. And of course, being uh, a photographer yourself and dabbling in that is, is really fantastic. So let's look at some eye candy. Can you show me your favorite piece in your collection? Oh. My favorite piece, you said my favorite. <laughs> These are my favorite pieces because I am, I also um, do toys, oh. you know, and they <laughs> And these are some of my favorite ones because I am a toy collector. And look, I got toy cameras. <laughs> so when I see these, I will pick these up. Okay. <laughs> All kidding aside, I do collect them though. <laughs> those are so fun, Tammy. And Louie is loving those. She thinks they're fun. <laughs> and Carrie's coming in from Austin saying, wow, well, that's a heck of a collection. And I agree, you've got a big collection behind you there. So I love the kids' cameras. I never even thought that you could collect kids' cameras, but you can, and that's pretty cool. 
I have more than that, but those are some of my favorite ones. Um, I, I actually, uh, now I have these, these are, they're similar, but they're total two different makers. I have the Savoy, this one's the uh, Savoy, the uh, Imperial Savoy and um, the Sabre. Now, what I like about these is the compact, but I'm not finished collecting these. If I run across these, I will pick them up. They only because they come in these beautiful colors. I mean, they have, uh, um, let's see, this one has a uh, green and blue teal color, the gray, the black, the red. Um, and this one might come in black um, Bakelite. This one comes in Bakelite and it has uh, the blue, teal, red and mint green. So um, these I will still pick up. They took um, uh, 620 films and, you know, here's their winding. Um, they their pinhole to look through. Um, they're, they're like a six by six print of photos. So they both came out in around uh, mid six, uh, mid 1950s. And I think the saber lasted longer than this one. So, but these I want to still collect. I want all the colors, you know, most of all my cameras are black, but I want these because of the colors, but those are fun little cameras and they're small, compact little cameras. And those are fun colors, and I love the fronts on them. So 1950s, and that brings us to our first question in the chat from Daniel. He's saying, do you know what years those are? Yeah, they, they started, um, both of them started in 1956. Uh, the Imperial lasted until 65, and wow. this one lasted until the early 70s. So, wow. and then they were discontinued. I, I wish I would have had the film to show y'all on each of them. And I was trying to find a picture for per each, but I couldn't find, I'm unsure because I didn't use these cameras, any of these cameras really. So I'm unsure what does the um, picture look like when it's the, you know, after it was developed from each one. So I couldn't find that on the internet. I tried, but I couldn't find it. <laughs> Well, and I think people are going away now from uh, using some of those old cameras because iPhones are so good at taking photographs now. They really do have professional cameras. But I do know there is a market for some of that old film because there are people that are getting into that, going back to those old cameras. Now, the old photographers, they prefer the old cameras, old time, you know the older generation photographers, they still love their manual cameras. Yes, they do. I still have a manual camera. I, I love my DSLR. I don't think I can get rid of it. <laughs> but Sharon's got a great question. And of course, guys, as we're going along the show and tell, please feel free to drop questions into the chat. If you've got them for Tammy, she wants to know what is the oldest camera you have in your collection? The oldest camera I have, we'll jump to those, is my box cameras now i have they come in several different sizes and um let me show you here they came in several colors several sizes if i can get them back far enough for you to see and there's two more that I have. These are the, the different sizes that I do have in these box cameras. I love these. Now, they there is a deco section. These started in the 1800s, started in the 1800s. And I don't remember when they ended. This is my biggest one. And this is my smallest one. Now they come in multiple colors. We have the red, a blue, and these are the leather ones. And I have a brown of these box cameras. You know, and look at the lenses, how they look different. These have the two side, I mean, these two have the two side ho pin hose, and these are front. I think this is a newer one, and these are the older ones. Um, I'm oh, sure it's exactly what date is each one, so. 
they they love the colors. Yes, they came in different colors. They came in wood, metal, which I have a couple of metal ones. Here's a metal one and here's a metal one. Oh, look at that. Now that one's probably Bakelite, right? Yeah, this one uh, may be a Bakelite. This, um, and this one is a metal one with the Art Deco like. Now that's the camera I have. I have a brownie target and uh, I love that design on the front. Now they have even cooler designs of these with the um, like a checkered or whatever in green, red, blue. Oh, I would love to get those. Haven't found those yet. And, you know, even though people don't use these cameras no more, they're, they're expensive. They're still they very expensive. And I, I've heard, and you can confirm this, but I've heard that the colored leather is a little bit more rare and they're harder to find. Yes, the colored leather ones are. Um, and mine are not in the best of shape, you know, because I, I, I don't spend 50 and 60 or more. I mean, they go up even in a couple of, you know, in the hundreds. I don't spend that kind of money on them, you know. <laughs> I just, I, I do it for fun and I have plenty, but if I find a good price at a cheap, you know, reasonable price, I'll pick it up. So those I wouldn't mind still collecting those colored ones like that. And I don't have any of those art deco ones with the, the checkers on the front and there's several colors of those. That would but, be amazing to find. And I, I do hope that you get those. <laughs> uh, now, now, LJ has a good question. He's saying, uh, was there a Kodak camera called the Swinger, or did I just make that up? No, nope, there's a Swinger. And I have one. It is a Polaroid. The Polaroid Swinger. They did not make film for this one no more. This um, this was in 65, and when they were, when they were born, I was just to say born, when they were made, <laughs> Um, they were under 20 bucks, you know, um, so around mid 60s, I think it was 65. I think these only did the black and white. And then there's one upgrade to this that um, started doing the color. And you can still get film for that one, not this one. This swinger one, you can, I don't believe you can get film for. And uh, some of these, I forget how they how they go and open. I don't always try to open them, but the film would, uh, and it has a little latch on the back to open it. These are really cool. And I think these came in a couple of different colors. So maybe a red one, I think. I do have a red Polaroid. You see it oh, here. Oh, that would be amazing. But it's not, that. that's not a swinger. This one is. But yeah, he's right. There is a swinger. <laughs> and Daniel's got a good question. He's saying, where do you find the majority of your cameras? Where do I find all my resource stuff? <laughs> Flea markets, um, estate sales, and uh, antique uh, stores. Um, some of these have been given to me, though. A lot of these were given to me. Diane says her mom had a brownie camera and all of her baby and childhood pictures were from that camera. And I believe you just showed a brownie camera just a minute ago. Yes, I have. There's several brownie cameras, though. Brown, but the square body brownie. And then we have the baby brownie. I think this one. Yep, yeah, this is a baby brownie. And this is a brownie special. Oh, this is a baby brownie. And yeah, no, these are both brownie, uh, bra um, baby brownies. I have a brownie special. So oh, those are so cool. And again, are they Bakelite? I'm just fast. This, I do believe these may be. And they take the picture on the side here. You wind the film on the side here. So I think I got this one for $6. <laughs> So the tag's still on it, <laughs> but yeah, there, there is a, I don't even know where I got that one from. Then forgot where it goes, but that's a, 
there's different brownies made in the box, the box um, camera, and then they have the the square cameras there. Now you talked about Tammy that you don't pay a whole lot for your cameras, and as we all know, they can get pretty pricey. But what is the least inexpensive camera that you have in your collection? Well, would be free. <laughs> that would be free. That was given to me. Um, it might be that for me paying for it. It might have been the six dollar one that I paid six dollars for. That is a good deal. Now, do you, do you look for ones that are working or do you just like the cameras? I don't bother with them working. I don't, I don't care about the working. I mean, there are collectors out there that only want them if they're working, but I don't care. I'm, I'm never going to use it if it's working. I just, I buy them for the looks. I'm totally about looks. <laughs> and uh, Gina is saying that her daughter has asked for an old Polaroid and she's on the lookout for one, but need to know where you can find film. Now, I have seen modern Polaroids. What are your thoughts, Tammy? Yes, there are, there are still Polaroids you can still get. Um, like the cousin to the swinger, they still make film for that one. And I forget the name of that one, but um, the upright ones that... Uh, let me show you. There is still film available. Like, let me show you the Polaroid film here. This is the kind of film you can still get. You can order it because my daughter orders it. They have newer versions, updated versions, and they're little bitty cameras that shoot the Polaroid about this big. My daughter has some of those. But you can still get this type of film. You cannot, I don't think you can get this type of film. They're more square, I mean, rectangle compared to the square one. Yes, that's me. This is my grandmother and her sisters. And then there's this one. That's me. And it, this is a cardboard. My parents must have cut it. But it's a cardboard um, piece of film. Um, like these are like, have this plastic-like backing. And these are like um probably like this one is it this one yeah they would pull out like this on the side you would you know pull it out like this it's that one or um or this one because this was my dad's camera oh it has a flash on the side this is a polaroid and i think this picture came from this from this oh, one. How wonderful to have your dad's camera. It, it, it's, in, it's not in the great, great, uh, greatest shape. It got a little rusted. I think it was out in the weather. And this is the flash that goes to it. I don't know how it's attached, though. I'm not even sure this actually belongs to it, but it does click on it. I don't know. But uh, I got that from my dad. So, um, yeah, you can still get Polaroids out there, though. They are still available. That is amazing. Yes. And I think having that old vintage Polaroid look is a lot of fun. I know there's a big style of people uh, clipping them to strings with little uh, clothespins and hanging them like garland in their houses now, which mm -hmm. is kind of fun. So, mm -hmm. Tammy, you showed us your oldest camera in your collection, your least expensive, and your favorite camera. But can you show us the camera that you spent the most money on? I know you don't spend a lot of money on your cameras, but uh, what's the most that you've ever spent? I think it would be this one. This one or this one. This is a Polaroid leather. It's the um, uh, SX, I think it is. Uh, yeah, SX. SX70 land camera and or this one I think this one I spent 20 on this one probably was about 22 20 as well but um okay for my vintage cameras that is but I love these this they would they they have the accordion body I have two of these the accordion body that folds in and makes a flat, flat um, pocket. I mean, easy to travel with, like you slip it in your pocket. So those were probably 
the two ex most expensive. This one might have been around that price too. I can't remember. I had this one longer. You see the body is a little bit worn on that flaking off on the the little blacks flaking off. But it's just amazing that you could take photos with those. Do what? To me, it's just amazing that you could actually take a photograph with something like that. Right. That, but this one, this one is my most expensive camera today. <laughs> yes. Well, this is my professional camera, <laughs> and it's not very vintage, but that's you know. a nice Nikon. Yes, it's a Nikon D uh, ninety is what I have, and of course, it's a digital. But once I went digital. I didn't want to do manual. Oh, yes. Digital is much easier. <laughs> and truth be known, I don't even use, I don't lug that no more. After our cell phones are getting so better, so much better in taking pictures, I use my cell phone for everything. iPhones really do take good pictures. Now, I've got a Canon uh, DSLR. Oh, I don't know the model number, but I, I do love my uh, telephoto lens. That's fun. So Tammy, I'm going to turn the camera back over to you and I'm just going to let you show some of your other cameras because it looks like you've got a pretty impressive <laughs> collection behind you. Okay. Well, I'll show you this section right here. Because I still had the box. You know how all of y'all love the, the graphics. I have the box to this one. This is the S10 Insomatic. Now, it's a Kodak. Insomatic started around 63, um, 1963, yeah. And it took a um, 120, I mean, 110 film. This one's a 110, or it took uh, 126, which is these. So these are all Instamatics, and there's, um, I'm forgetting where my camera is here. And uh, they started out with these, the box body. And, uh, but there, these were the most made making models for cameras. There was, um, oh, 40, I think it was 47 of these type of making models, you know, for Instamatic. Um, and, in 60, 1969, the most was made of different makes and models because always the numbers change in on them. But it's always an in Kodak and somatic. They're all mostly in this box form or this one. They have this one. This is a shorter one. There's a one that's a little bit longer. <coughs> they came with these um, extended flashes for the cubes. They all came, you know, have the, the cubes for the top here. And for that, because if the flash was down here too close to the lens, it would give you red eye or blur, um, put a glare on your picture. So they needed to get the flash a little bit away from the, the lens. But I don't know if this was the most made camera, but they made a lot of them between the year of um, uh, 1960, early 60s to the late 1970s. So that was... That. I'll have to rearrange my camera. I mean, my camera's back again. <laughs> uh, We've got a question coming in from LJ. Okay. And then this is a great question, LJ. Is there a Kodak Museum in upstate New York? Do you know? Do I know? No, I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm sure there's one somewhere, but I'm not sure about that one. It would be fun to visit. I would, I would just be in oh my God. Camera museum. <laughs> I have a lot of the plain Jane cameras y'all and there is so many fantastic body styles colors the shapes of them there's some great ones out there and they're and they're pricey they're always in the hundreds and um and I've seen them and I, I've I've even videoed them saying oh I like that one but not today <laughs> guys <laughs> it was a little little bit too much for my taste <laughs> And I'm like you, I'm not actively looking to get a camera that's working. So I've always found some of my vintage cameras, not that I have a big collection, but I usually try to find the ones that are broken in some way in the middle. So I just want the, the cool look of them. 
on mm -hmm. the outside. But of course, if you're looking to make sure they work, then I'm sure you got to really uh, know what you're looking at to see if they're working or not. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I have um, not only those, let's see, the different Polaroids. I showed you the leather one, you know, which is this one's pretty cool. It that flattens out. Awesome. Um, then we have the, the red one the swinger that i showed you earlier and then i have um probably three different styles of these which is pretty much like the red one um which this one's a polaroid land camera the guy that made these i think his last name was land i forget what his first name is but land that's why they're called land cameras but i have several of these i have a lots of black ones and those seem like they would be pretty bulky to tote around. <laughs> yeah, but they're lightweight. That Those particular ones are pretty lightweight. We're so spoiled today with our iPhones. <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> and, you know, of course, I only have the two of these, which are, you know, two of my favorite because they're really cool looking. I love the accordion ones. Then we have a, we have the, um, ones that you would look down in now this one's really cool looking he and it's heavy but this one you would look down into it like this to take the picture um but it's oh wow look at that and i, I i've never worked one of these but it shuts shuts up like that and it's heavy now i think i've seen those on a stand do you have any camera stands yes i do it's um let me get it real quick man i'm telling you tammy's got some amazing cameras she really does oh wow look at this you guys i have look this one it's a it's a wood wood style um now this i it's not that i use i keep my big box camera on this one it screws on up here i keep this one on here but i think this is really made for those, I'm not even sure what kind of camera it is, but it's one of the first ones where you put the hood over you and this is a type of film it would develop on, something like this. These are film trays that you would put in the camera and pull out. I, I These were cool. This one was a, this was $6. I still had the tag on it. And what I used, used these for, you can't see it. These are plastic. Well, this one's metal. I have a metal one. I have a wooden one, a newer wooden one, but old, new, but old. And then I have this really old one. I use it as a picture frame. So that's one Ooh, of my, clever. my 101 year old grandmother. So it works good for picture frames. But I think that style of camera with, had, that went on this um, TV stand. That is a great way to reuse and repurpose is to make a frame out of that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good question coming in here from Jeannie, Chicago lady. She says, do you have any Roy Rogers box cameras? No, I do not. And with Roy, Roy, Roy Rogers name on it, you're going to pay up for them. But no, I don't have any of those. And I don't know if I've seen a box camera, but I've seen some of his other cameras. And yeah, they're anywhere 80 and up is what I've seen when I've run across them in, you know, antique stores. Now, Jamie's got a cool comment coming in here. She says her cousin is a photographer and uses vintage and antique cameras. And it's an amazing art. And I bet it is, Jamie. You really got to know what you're doing with some of those. And you got to know what you're doing. And because let, let me tell you, like these, this, the button here, it's a matter of how fast you push it. Um, where is one? Oh, okay. Let's, let's say this box camera. This is the uh, shutter to um, let the light in and out. The slower you push it down the more light that comes in the quicker you do it the less light so that's how you get your great or bad exposure if you're outside or inside oh by the way these box cameras 
were mostly used for outdoors lighted areas let's say you know but that's how they control the light coming in is these little these little switches right here you put this de de determines how slowly you push it down how much light you let in to develop the film if you do it very very slow you can blow out the picture where it's like all white you know the quicker you do it it could if you do it really quick it could be dark because you didn't let enough light in so it's definitely yeah. a delicate balance that you have to learn for sure yes oh i didn't show you this this is my smallest camera next to this little box camera this is a um what is it univex it's this is a box camera. See, this one's messed up. It's missing its backing. It's literally just a box. <laughs> but those are my two smallest cameras that I have. Those are amazing. I've never seen ones that small other than the little tiny Japanese ones. I've seen a few of those. And I'm sure y'all have seen these, the 10. Now, this is the only one that's not in my family i found this at an estate sale i mean uh, actually at a resale shop and they're usually pricey for film it, you know anywhere from 16 and up i got this for a dollar so i had to get that part of my collection but it's one of those 10 10 um pictures it's the only one i have those are so neat now, Proud American's got an interesting question. He's asking if anybody still sells flash bulbs. I picked one up this past weekend because <laughs> the the um, uh, I don't have the actual Polaroid, but you know the the newer plastic Polaroids that take these this kind of film. Some of those take a long flash and. Um, you can order anything off Amazon if it's still made, but yes, I I, I picked one up from a, a um, antique store. So I don't know if that one is actually still made or if it was just old stock, honestly. But there are the there are some of the older model. Um, oh, I can't even talk now um polaroids that are you can still buy film for so if it does calls for a flash i'm sure you should be able to get that as well but it's going to be online now i'm eyeing that camera behind you that's got a flash on it speaking of flash bulbs maybe you've already shown the the one down right this there one? yes i'm eyeing that one can you tell us a little bit about it it's a a brownie hawk brownie hawkeye oh look at that this would take at one of those little mini bulbs and this is an attachment that comes on it and this is uh probably bake light as well that is but an amazing it, camera i would love to what cameras i do have get them completed get the light bulb in here but i think this socket is messed up so i would have to probably get a whole new thing like this but the handle and I think I found these separately so this is where you would push it to take the picture uh, this one is also you would look down on the into this for the viewfinder so yeah I have and, a and then this one has the flash as well with a oh, wow. bulb in it Look how Art Deco the front of that camera is. Yeah, they're metal plates. So this one has a little color to it, the red. And this one you would view find it in the back here. But um, now Jamie one. is asking you, are those the ones that each bulb is used one time and then they explode? I, yes, I think so. Yes. That's really fun when you see an old movie and you've got that sound effect where all the, the uh, reporters are taking yeah. photos. You can just hear the bulbs is breaking. I mean, oh, man. 
and this one you only get um, four flashes out of it it would turn when you use it it would click turn click turn so and then you have to replace that once it's used up four, yeah four flashes you would get and then you'd have to replace it and I, I saw several people asking about film development in the chat. Now, I do believe that you can go places that will still develop film. Mm -hmm. We have a, a place here uh, called Phototechnica, and they, they specialize in uh, photography and developing film and slides. So are you finding places like that in your area, Tammy? Yes, we, we do still have it. Um, actually, I think they, of course, have to send off. The places local to me, they have to send them off. Um, but I don't do that. <laughs> I'm strictly digital now, but, uh, um, and I'm, I mail it off online and have it sent back to me through the mail. I don't even have to go up there no more. The place I always used to go to, you could go in there and set, um, upload your pictures or drop off your film. Well, they don't even do it no more. They send it off. So you just bypass them now and send it straight off. There's not many places around here that still develop on site. They're all sending them out. That is a, definitely probably a lost art for a lot of places. Mm -hmm, but if mm -hmm. you can find a place that does develop an in-house like Phototechnica, it's pretty cool. Now, uh, Rebecca at Mama's Treasures wanted to know, she said, we found a couple of boxes of vintage yellow Kodaks with the film still inside of them from the estate home we cleaned out. We are uncertain whether they are unused or developed. Any thoughts? Okay, unused, let's see, I have, I have some film here, some, oh, maybe it's this one. Cute little tin, this is what they used to come in, these metal little tins that say Kodak on them. These are really cool. So, if they're all the way winded up, they've been used. If they're still in the box sealed, you know, they haven't been used, but they're probably possibly an expiration date when they're wind. I mean, when they've been used and you wind them up, this disappears. There's always a tab out there to, um, to connect into your camera for it to grab for you to start your first um, slide. So this one has already been used. I don't know. Um, I mean, this is empty, but this this wouldn't be. It would be a piece sticking out if it's ready for to put in your camera to use. Um, that's a 35 millimeter. Um, now on the one uh, tens or something like that, there's usually numbers on them. If I remember right, it will say one through um, if it's 24 exposures, it tells you the exposure it's on. And again, if um, they been in the heat or exposed to too much light, it and being old, they're probably no good. But uh, you'd be surprised. You can find a whole row at an estate sale that uh, that's not been developed yet, and you might find some pictures on it. So. We had tons and tons of rolls of film in my grandparents' basement. I mean, we found boxes and boxes. And okay, those I'd have to go get developed if they were my grandparents. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, some of them uh, we did, and then we've got several that were new, and so we uh, donated them. But there was just so much. And my grandfather, he, he loved cameras and was always up to date with the current camera technology. So they had tons of cameras. I wish I had saved more of them. I just didn't know a lot about them at the time like I do now. Uh-huh. When we're young, we don't know. <laughs> I have I have this one. This is a childhood camera that I know my mother had. She had the 110. And then, and of course, I have the box to this one. I remember using this one. The disc camera. Do y'all remember that one? Ooh, that's you have this, Katie? No, we didn't no. have this camera. Now, this is definitely slender to fit in your pocket. Now, this one had really unusual film the film looked like this. It was literally a disc. Oh, wow. So it was a circle and I get, and I probably have some somewhere cause I think I have my mother's uh, pictures uh, somewhere. And I bet I have those in my, where all the negatives and stuff are. But this is an eighties camera. It came out in early eighties. 
So and that film looks a lot like uh, those uh, slides that you insert yeah. Yeah. and click through. But uh, I have the box. That, that's cool. Now, when you find these, uh, do you often always look for the boxes with them? And do, does that make it more valuable? I, I don't know about the, uh, yes, I would, the box would give it more value. Uh, probably not much more than the camera itself for like that style. Now, if you, um, the boxes that I have for the star mite, like this one. Mm, what was this? I think this is 34, but I'm sure I got this at half price, but, uh, you know, at an estate sale. Oh, wow. Look at that. The graph but, uh, of that. I think I have one that has the stuff in it still, some stuff in it. Now, are you finding a lot of these at estate sales when you go, or do you find them mainly at antique stores? Uh, usually, you're going to get your better price at an estate sale if you come across a camera. But um, I think they became a, you know, people are wanting to collect them, and they know that now, so they're starting to put higher prices on them. But you have better chances at an estate sale garage sale or even a goodwill if you're lucky at a good even goodwills try to price them up really high now but um antique stores hmm, they're going to be high they're going to be the market value or more and like i said this the antique stores are going to have the most unusual ones as well really cool looking ones yes you do have a big collection and man it is some eye candy i'm just loving this tammy so what else yeah. do you have to share with us i have 40 i counted them 48 48 or 49 cameras is what i have and i have uh nine video cameras which you are not seeing those see the video cameras on top oh those are amazing and the video film so you'll see all those closer up. Well, I don't know if I put my video cameras. I did a, a just a a quick view of them, but I did put a a video out that will be going out at midnight tonight. Yes. Yeah, so, so make sure you guys subscribe to Danny to watch her follow up video to the show and tell. I just threw the link in the chat. So make sure you guys go hit that subscribe button. I have this couple of different other styles here I and mean, look at this one this is I, I recall they making a huge box camera like this 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 shape of it and I don't know if it was movies or it was just it was a large one I've seen one similar to this like that I don't know what brand it was but and then you know like these come with their straps on it this is a a Sawyer Nomad um those are oh and then here's an older version of the 35 millimeters the cannon here's a cannon these suckers are heavy it's like all metal body this is a um a battery pack they usually come with the you know leather straps like this or not leather but you know a, like a cloth strap they usually don't come with these extended lenses they're um this would be in an additional or you could get it in a kit this camera's heavy it's hurting my arm <laughs> this is strictly manual it's a 35 millimeter um all manual and my dad had one of those he's very interested in photography like i am and he ended up uh, trading that camera in for a newer model and he sold it to a photography student who was really interested in doing uh, manual work. Mm -hmm. There is a camera, uh, uh, a camera store that does uh, your repairs and your cleaning of your cameras and stuff over here near us. And they have some awesome cameras in there and they are very pricey. Now, LJ wants to know who invented cameras. Do you know? He, he's asked, she's asking if it's Thomas Edison. I did. I, I, I did know. I wrote it down. 
invented the first one? Yes, the first camera. Well, now invented. I'm not going to remember. I did when I was researching, so I wouldn't look totally stupid when I was talking about my cameras. Now I don't remember. Um, I don't remember. And I'm horrible That's about remembering names and stuff. <laughs> we are all horrible sometimes at that. So okay. <laughs> I could do a Google search for you real quick. And these are the other style lenses. This is the uh, size lens that would normally come on a 35 millimeter and you would buy the, you know, the extensions, you know, switch them out. My camera now that I have, I have several different sizes of lenses for them. This is the newer Polaroid, one of my first Polaroids that I had after getting married. And I don't know if you can still get film. For, uh, you probably can still get film for this one. So I haven't used this in years. Many years. But they, they've come a long ways because going from some that are kind of light, even though this is big, it's lighter than those metal ones, the metal cameras. They're, they're heavy to lug around. Oops. Those cameras are really heavy. And I can imagine uh, that it would just be hard back in the day to have access to easy photographs because you imagine in the early days of photography, having to go somewhere to someone that would specialize in that because I don't think a lot of people then would have had, had cameras as readily available at their house. And it's cool to see your collection because you've got antique cameras through sort of the modern era. And we really see how far we all have come. Mm -hmm. And how many they, I mean, it's, it's amazing how many, I don't, I should have looked up how many different companies there are. I, I mean, I'm sure I wouldn't get the full view of how many styles there are. I try to do that. I try to get a timeline and, there's just way too many out there. There is so many out there. Let me get this one. I think it's because here's another one of my boxes. Oh, look at that. The boxes are really cool. I hate to, you know, pass them along. So I just started setting the cameras on top of them. The boxes oh, are yeah. everything. There you go. Oh, look, it's got the flash bulbs in it. I forgot. <laughs> See, I forget what I have. There's the film. And here's, and there's some bulbs in there. Do these work? I have no idea. And this one is the brownie. What style is that? The brownies uh, star flash. Star flash camera. Now, when would that would have been made? Uh, the brownie star flash was... That's okay. I think it's the seventies. I'm I'm trying to think. Look, this is real film. I think this one's in the seventies. I did have a. Uh, I did have this, and another piece of paper written down. What is this? What film is this? This is. Oh. This is a little tube. I don't know what model. I mean. Um, I like the aluminum color on that tube. Yeah. I guess it says it's a, a 127. Was there 127 film? So that's new to me. I've never tried these cameras. I've never, I don't think my parents had these cameras. But it says 127. Would that be the film? Does it have a date of expiration on that film? Sixty, nineteen sixty-four, January of nineteen sixty-four. So these cameras were in the sixties. That is amazing, and to find it all in one neat package still is just absolutely incredible to me. Yeah, I can't say I remember where this one came from. I do not remember. I've had this one a while, and it's been in the back hiding, you know, in the because <laughs> I put the boxes towards the back because you know they cover up everything. But that, the graphic on that is pretty cool. 
The graphic is fabulous. Anyway, I need to put that one out because it has a bulb. I need to display that one. You definitely should. <laughs> well, Tammy, this has been an absolute delight. Your collection is just incredible. And we'll have to have you on to show more. We're running out of time, but it was really great having you on tonight. And uh, of course, I hope with these show and tells folks that it will inspire you to either start a collection of your own or to do a deep dive into an area of uh, vintage that you never thought you could research. So that's really my, my hope with these show and tells and just to get to see some cool eye candy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and this is one of my favorites. Look, it has a Polaroid because I'm a toy lover. So <laughs> well, that's so fun. All right, Tammy's going to snap our picture and remember <laughs> this one show and tell evening, guys. Uh, and again, if you have any questions or you have anything that you want to see, make sure you go check out Tammy's video. She's doing a uh, follow-up video after this at, uh, what time was it? Did you say Tammy? It's going to drop at midnight because I want to put the link of this in there too, in the description. Awesome. So midnight tonight, guys, look out for that on Tammy's channel, Vintage Uprising Texas. I've been posting the link in the chat throughout the evening. And of course, it's linked down below. So go subscribe to our fabulous guest, Tammy. And of course, a couple of things I want to mention before we jump off for the evening is make sure that you go follow a couple of sales happening. There's going to be a late night sale with Pamela Blanchard and Sabrina Simon at 1030. That's coming up in a few minutes on Pamela Blanchard's channel. And of course, Gina and Kat, Vintage Digs and Calypso Cat are having a sale together. And Mama's Treasures, are you having a sale? I thought someone said Rebecca, and that's Mama's Treasures. So you guys make sure you hit the bell and uh, follow all of our friends in the vintage community tonight. And I'll be sale hopping, so I'll see you at each of the lives uh, <laughs> as we go on in the evening. But again, a big round of applause for Tammy. Smash that thumbs up button. Tammy, thanks for being here tonight. Well, thanks for having me. All righty, folks. Well, that's going to do it for this episode of Show and Tell. Now, next week, my special guest is going to be Daniel, but it's not your average Show and Tell. We're doing Show and Tell Live Sale Edition. So Daniel and I are going to have a fun sale together. So you want to come back for that next week at same time, same place. And as always, I hope you will stay in, stay safe, and bend YouTube. Bye-bye now.